that introduction. Thank you all for being here. What a great turnout this is. I'm, I'm really impressed. Uh, thanks for being here. Just show of hands real quick. How many of you have ever listened to AM560 WIND? All right. Excellent. Thank you. Because uh, without you guys, I wouldn't have a job. And uh, a lot of us wouldn't have an important mouthpiece and a lot of uh, megawatts to share our opinions with the entire Chicagoland community, and then our signal reaches into a number of other Midwestern states. Uh, the topic tonight, immigration, it's a tough one. It's a very sensitive one. Uh, two of my best friends in the world are of Mexican descent, and we talk about these issues all the time. And unlike issues of spending and health care and things like that, they should be personal to all of us. When ethnic identity and family lineage comes into play, I think it becomes extraordinarily personal. And sometimes the facts and the law become secondary, they don't even matter. And so for people who believe in strong borders, border enforcement, and actually maintaining national sovereignty, it's important for us to think about these issues in a clear manner and be able to communicate them in a way that is clear and principled, but also not necessarily threatening, where people don't feel like you know we're jamming fingers in chest saying, we don't want you, we don't want your type, because that's not what this is about. This is about keeping this country strong and safe and free, and that includes immigration, legal immigration. That's why we're all here. Someone along the line was a legal immigrant to this country, and that's something I think is a very important message. So it's funny, you know, there's all this talk within the Republican and conservative circles of rhinos, Republican in name only, and you have to be conservative on every issue, and immigration has been one that, for me personally, has been very difficult because I saw what President Bush tried to do uh, with the help of people like John McCain. Uh, and I have tremendous respect for President Bush. I have served as an intern in, uh, in his White House. I have tremendous respect for John McCain, his service in this country. And I saw some of the things that they were trying to do. And on paper, they made sense. This path to citizenship, all these policy initiatives that they were trying to bundle up into comprehensive immigration reform. And not all of it disgusted me or turned me off. But I think what it comes, comes back to, and I'm sure our speakers tonight will expound on this a little bit, is job number one is securing the border. And the federal government has been utterly derelict and incompetent, and in many cases unwilling to do that job. So for someone who on this issue is kind of in the middle and a little bit moderate, I knew that a big mistake, a political mistake was being made by the Democrat Party when two weeks ago, I sat and watched my television as the president of Mexico lectured our country yeah. about a law that was enacted by a duly freely elected governor and a duly freely elected legislature and is supported by 70% of the people in the jurisdiction who voted for those representatives. He walked in and condemned it, which was rich, very rich, because as many of you know, Mexican immigration law is much harsher and more draconian than the Arizona law is. That's right. and, and that's something that seemed to be lost on President Calderon. But as I said on my radio show the next Sunday night, I, I felt just this anger boiling up in me and I was trying to pinpoint why. And I realized I really wasn't really all that upset with President Calderon because at the end of the day, Felipe Calderon was elected by the people of Mexico to look out for the interests and defend the interests of the people of Mexico. And he was, and he is. Loose immigration enforcement in this country is beneficial to the state of Mexico. They rely on it for an enormous amount of their national income. It's their second highest foreign income source, which is a stunning number. It's, it's in the billions every single year. And uh, remittances. So, in coming to excoriate our country for trying to enforce our borders and our laws while being totally hypocritical and I think undignified and uh, rude, he was doing his job. The people who were not doing their job were the Democrats who leapt to their feet and gave him a standing ovation. <laughs> Vice President and the Speaker of the House were behind him, big grins, 
And it, it's one of those things where I think that's a clarifying moment on the issue. And I, I hope that if uh, the other party has its head on straight, I hope that that clip will make it into a lot of campaign ads this fall. Because you don't have to be a Tea Party patriot, you don't have to be a conservative talk show host and writer to watch that spectacle and say there is simply something that is deeply broken and wrong in this country right now. And I think that's something that all of us here can come together because we want to make sure that we can fix it. Because we can fix it because we're Americans. And you know, just throwing up our hands and getting upset, as was alluded to earlier, that's not what we do. We identify problems and we fix them. And unfortunately, a lot of those problems are individual people sitting in Washington who need to find a new line of work and we're going to help them do that. <laughs> so. speakers tonight. I've had the pleasure of meeting both of them uh, on a number of occasions in the past. Uh, the first is Maria Rodriguez. Maria and her husband Ray have been married for nearly 30 years. They spent most of their married life in Lake County. She and her husband have been active in civic and charitable organizations, including the Lions Club, the Rotary, church, school, village, and local Republican organizations. She is the village president of Long Grove and recently was a congressional candidate in the 8th Congressional District. She was a Republican, one of many who wanted to retire Melissa Bean, okay. which is something I think we can all applaud. Yeah. A very smart lady, a graduate of the University of Illinois at Chicago with a degree in economics. Please welcome Maria Rodriguez. Thank you. 